Good morning. This virus has touched um, everybody in our community and has changed the way we do almost everything. Unfortunately, responsible responses have been tainted by political rhetoric, uh, putting at risk all the things that we have accomplished and the safety of everyone. Pushing back against responsible actions with reckless behavior undermines all the sacrifices that we've made. And no one with any compassion should be trying to undermine or challenge the credibility of our healthcare workers in hospitals taking care of patients, patients in the ICU, patients on ventilators who are uh, there because of this virus. We've had more than 850 deaths in our community and, and one person on average dies every day now. And every day at least 200 more people are diagnosed with COVID. Across the country this virus rages on. Yet there are some who believe that with a blink that this virus will be gone. And some political leaders will even tell you that it's uh, done its deed and it's moved on. Such remarks are untrue and dangerous. I appreciate the overwhelming support of our community from everyone who is participating in social distancing, wearing a mask, and following our public health guidelines. All of us working together is the only way we're going to get through this and the only way we can have more conversations about easing some of our public health restrictions. Our frontline workers are at constant risk of catching this virus, and it's even forced a shutdown and restrictions in many of our businesses and services across the county. And Metro has seen firsthand the impact of this virus. Fewer people are going to work and riding public transportation, fewer visitors to St. Louis, uh, fewer concerts, fewer sporting events, and all of these has had an impact, a significant impact, on ridership of our buses and our trains. But many of our workers in grocery stores and in restaurants and other services depend on public transportation to get back and forth to work. And Metro has committed various new protocols to keep their, their riders and their employees safe. And they continue to look for innovative ways to, uh, to provide public transfer, uh, transportation during a pandemic, which is an extraordinary challenging time. So we are here today to talk about one of those innovations. And I'd like to take a minute to introduce Talby Roach, the CEO of Metro, who will talk about how they've uh, made accommodations during the pandemic, and then also about these vehicles that are behind us. Toby? Thank you, Dr. Page. So even uh, when Dr. Page and I came in, we are vigilant about the screening, and, and you see the pink band that I have on, and, th and that is a sign of what we are doing to protect not only our workers, but our community. It's about health integrity. Health integrity includes not only our frontline workers, but also ultimately health integrity in our region with these wonderful electric buses you've seen behind us. But I wanna note that since March the 23rd, 100% of our transit employees are screened prior to coming into work. Part of that is just getting the integrity that the public deserves to see that our workforce has been protected and reviewed. COVID has had a devastating impact. But what the public is expecting us to do, us to do at Metro, is to protect them at every instance that we can. So that continues. We have nightly disinfecting of these vehicles. We are going over the surfaces of all those vehicles, even at, at the turn when, when these vehicles are turning on their routes when they're out. We, of course, we have added polycarbonate barriers to, to uh, separate the drivers from the customers. An, an extra step, our staff has done the extraordinary work of adding polycarbonate barriers where they were not already within the buses. In addition to that, we are, of course, asking the public and, of course, uh, our, our operators to wear a mask. I always like to think of the, of the three, three W's wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your social distancing. Those three W's are the things that can protect us, our workforce, and our community.
please help us in getting there. We can get on the other side of this pandemic, but we need to be vigilant and we're gonna be vigilant at Metro every single day. Thank you, Dr. Page, of course, for coming. I can't tell you what it means to our workforce and the community that you're interested in their well-being. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you, Toby. Um, a quick update on the County CARES Act funding. Um, as many of you know, the Municipal Relief Program has uh, started and we've begun uh, sending funding to our communities in St. Louis County who also need help because of this pandemic. And this morning, more than $5 million was transferred to nine municipalities and we will continue working with the other municipalities to get their applications complete so we can get them the funding that they need as well. Those who received uh, funding today are Baldwin, Chesterfield, Crestwood, De Pere, Glendale, um, Norwood Court, Pasadena Park, Shrewsbury, and University City. Thanks to the County Cares team for all of their hard work and getting these federal funds out to the places in our community that need them the most. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Anyone? Well, that's straightforward. Doug, do you have anything? Okay. Thank you and have a good weekend. <laughs>